Hello, I'm Bill Culpepper, President of CPRO Corporation. Welcome to this online tutorial on brake herbicide, the first new pre-emergent mode of action for cotton in years. Our research organization has been developing brake along with over 20 university and cotton industry experts over the last four years. We were encouraged to do this by the USDA to bring a new mode of action to the cotton grower. We are pleased to be bringing brake to the industry. Brake provides extended weed control with excellent safety to cotton, allowing you to maximize yield potential. Brake is an excellent pre-emergent, even in wet conditions, allowing your cotton to get off to a great start. You may not know about CPRO. We are a small, U.S.-based, privately held company. We have an excellent staff dedicated to quality production, research and development, and technical field support. Brake will be manufactured in our plant in eastern North Carolina not far from the cotton and tobacco farm I grew up on. We are a small company working to bring new technology to the cotton grower, and we look forward to working with you. The program you're about to see is divided into two parts. The first provides an overview of brake herbicide and how using it as part of an integrated weed management system for the control of Palmer amaranth and other weeds helped get cotton off to a great start. The second part provides specifics on brake herbicide use recommendations based upon your specific geographic location. The program concludes with a short quiz to test your knowledge on brake and to qualify you for incentives. Thank you for your interest in brake. Well, the primary reason we're involved with brake is because we're looking at a really serious developing situation with resistance and lack of mode of actions to deal with weeds that are becoming resistant to other herbicides. Typically, Cotton Incorporated will enter the program when people are developing products. In this case, we got in a little earlier. Cipro is a company that had a mode of action that had not been, the weeds primarily had not been exposed to in those systems. We saw that it had activity against most of the major weeds in cotton and the thing that really brought it out was its tolerance. My first involvement with the active ingredients in brake herbicide was back in the April of 1978. We established our cotton trials at the Upper Coastal Plain Research Station in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. About four weeks later, I went to Rocky Mountain and looked at the trial, and sure enough, the only thing left was cotton, and the cotton was in good shape. So we had really good tolerance to cotton and really good control of a lot of different weeds. Let's fast forward about 30 years. Uh, I was, at that time, in 2011, uh, working for the U.S. Department of Agriculture and happened to be on a field tour of the upper Mississippi Delta. And I remember one field in particular that we looked at. Uh, I was really having a hard time deciding it was a cotton field because you really had to look really closely to see any cotton. And I got to thinking, you know, what would it take to solve this problem? And I thought about this product, Fluoridone. This thing was really good on the pigweed species. So when the tour was over and I went back to Washington, I called Bill Culpepper with CPRO. And later that year, he did send some of the product to uh, Dr. Norsworthy in, in Arkansas to do some greenhouse testing. Uh, that led to field testing starting in 2012. And, and here we are today with uh, brake herbicide getting ready to go into the cotton market. We are very much now into a total system uh, with as much residual activity in there as we can get. And again, the idea is we want to take some of the pressure off the post herbicides. So we're very much into residual herbicides. Again, with most of our cotton now being no-till or strip-till, we like to start with some residual as part of the burn down. And then we're going to follow with some more residual behind the planter. Hopefully everything's going to, we're going to get rainfall and everything's going to work. But to further extend that residual, we typically talk about putting a residual such as a warrant or a dual in with our post herbicide to further extend the residual. Uh, in the case of brake, I think the uh, primary interest there is because it does give us it's not a new mode of action, but in essence it's new because it hasn't, it's not one that's been used in a long time. 
currently there is no other use for that particular mode of action in a row crop in the U.S. And so in essence, the weeds haven't seen it. And so it gives us uh, one more way to get some additional chemistry, some additional diversity in our system so that we're hopefully extending the life of everything by doing so. But break, like all the other herbicides, is not a standalone product. It's not meant to do that. It's meant to be part of a program uh, utilizing all the tools that a cotton grower has available to control the weed problems he has. Uh, but break it will be a very important tool for cotton growers because it is new. It controls a number of weeds that cotton growers are having trouble with today, specifically those weeds that have resistant to the herbicides that we've been using for some time. Uh, break has always performed very well once we get it activated. Again, it's very good chemistry. It's new chemistry uh, for our cotton growers. Again, the combination with something like a Fomisophen or Reflex, I think is critical, especially in dry land production for our growers, uh, because a lot of times we may not get but two or three tenths inch of rain. Well, that won't get the fluoridone going, but it will get the Fomisophen going, which will buy you more time to get the fluoridone activated. It will sit out and wait for rain, and again, it will provide you a significant uh, benefit in weed control. But there is no question, it's a very, very good herbicide. I don't believe I have ever seen an herbicide that has the cotton tolerance that Brake has, and it's probably its greatest advantage. Hopefully, as we go forward, we're going to remember that we do need multiple modes of action. We do need multiple components of our weed control system, so hopefully we're going to continue to rely on multiple chemistry instead of predominantly on one thing. Where does break fit into this? Break gives us another option. Uh, not only is it effective on some of our problem weeds, such as the Palmer, we've got crop safety, and we've got new chemistry in essence. But outstanding chemistry, new chemistry, uh, and, and again, I think its value increases as Palmer amaranth continues to gain resistance to more and more classes of chemistry almost each year. I think we have a situation of exceptional tolerance. I've seen it, I have confidence in it, I'd use it myself. Uh, I'm just delighted for cotton growers that CPRO was able to develop this, uh, get it registered for cotton, uh, which is not an easy task, but uh, they, stayed, they stayed with it and uh, here we are with a new herbicide.